Um, so this is Bobby Paglia. How old are you now, Bobby? 13? Uh, where are you? 13 years old. Wow. He was a child wonder, but now he's too old for that. <laughs> and and um, uh, Bobby loves improvising, and Bobby plays in a band. In fact, the band is really rather successful, doing really great. And so we wanted to integrate more and more blues studies and the like into what we're doing here. So we took the song, Cirque de Blues. Did, now, Bobby, were we playing it all the way through and then doing solo? Where were you putting your solos? So, so we're doing it, he's going straight through to the first ending, but then going back and doing an improvisation over the form. And then going back again, and playing it regularly but with fills, and then going back again and going to the second ending. Right? Did I say that right? It's something like that. <laughs> so here we go, okay, for the first piece. Susan, I was, did you want to comment on that piece? Did you want to make some comments, please? Well, it was just wonderful to hear it expanded and um, a lot of, lot of creativity and agility. I mean, your playing is wonderful and, you know, the, the creativity and co composition that you did to do that was amazing. So thank you for doing that. I have no problem with people expanding on my music. <laughs> uh, yes. I hope, do you, do you compose it all? Do you write it? Sounds like you do. He's starting to. Do you write, Bobby? He's starting to. 
Not so much, right? Not so much yet. Though we should go there more and more, absolutely. Yes, good call. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's go to the next player then, right? We'll get a couple, we'll get the playing and then um, see where that leads us further. So, yes. and so here is one of Laura's favorite people. Here to <laughs> oh, play yeah. again. <laughs> And here you're about to show on screen. There you are, Lily. Now you're on screen. And, oh, uh, Lily, you're a beautiful young lady now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Laura taught uh, I, Lily before I did. I met Lily when Laura moved to Oregon. And, and so this is old home week for these guys. Oh, nice. here. And, Yay. And, yeah. <laughs> and we were saying that later after we play all of these, we'd love to play your Chopin if you're still up for that, because we thought you'd get a kick out of hearing what she's doing for her uh, recital, other recital pieces and such. Uh, what, Definitely. Um, would you introduce this? What, what piece are you playing? Uh, Sweet Dreams. Yeah. Which is the uh, lullaby, the Sandman's Waltz. Right. <laughs> Susan, did you? Uh, <laughs> very, much, very much so. Just a little history. I, yes, um, please. I was going to ask I that. Have, I have step grandchildren and then I have heart over. grandchildren. And that was written after I took care of one of the heart grandchildren and she fell asleep on my shoulder. And I came home and started writing that. So uh, you oh, played it beautifully. Fun. Just how fun. Very, a lot of feeling and um, very wonderfully. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I play that piece all the time. I play uh, at the hospital. We have a beautiful lobby of our hospital in town, and they have a whole, whole program of volunteer pianists that come in. And I really enjoyed some of your phrasing and your dynamics, Lily. I'm going to steal them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
we worked very carefully on a lot of that phrasing, and it's beautifully written piece that really uh, opens up a lot of possibilities with the phrasing. We kept finding the deeper we went, right? The more it kept uh, expanding for us. Yeah. Lily, was there anything special that you liked about the piece? Um, Lily, did you I hear just, that? I just like how like soft it is, and like it's not easy, but it's also like just like simple. But not simple. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Could you hear that okay? I sure could. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I know what you mean. You don't have to practice for hours to be able to play it, but there's a depth and a beauty there that uh, that just keeps getting richer with time. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, this is Candace Patrick. And here she is in our in the photo. And uh, Candace, what can see you playing? Um, now that I found you. And can you hear that okay over there? It's now that I yeah. found you? Yes, yes, good. I'm sorry that with this mic I can't, I mean with this camera I can't zoom. That would have been nice. But I am doing a little of that with the other camera. Anyway, um, so Candace.
That was lovely, Candice. Yay. <laughs> Did you have thoughts this season? Yeah. yeah. I always enjoy writing waltzes. They're usually very um, happy and, and pretty, and you want to kind of move to them. And so it's, I always enjoy when a waltz comes to me. <laughs> yes. Beautiful, yes. Beautiful job with that. Thank you so much. A lot of good soft and, and your dynamics and things. And there's some good runs in there that take a little practice. Exactly. <laughs> I love when you got to the part at the end in the upper register. That was really precious and beautiful. Yes. Yeah, really well timed, Candice. Lovely. Yeah. Yes. yes. Do you have any feedback of, of the song? Or, or how it touched you, or what you liked about it, or didn't like about it? No, I, I love playing it. I like. No, I don't. I never got like tired of just like playing it over and over because it's just so pretty. Good. And, and Good. as a parent, I will say that we love hearing it over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it comes in, we're like, play that song here. Let's play the song. Again. <laughs> so it's a, it's absolutely beautiful piece that. We I grew up the the daughter of a. A music teacher in the small town, and so after school every night, and then on Saturdays, um, students would come, and of course they would play things over and over. And of course I was playing things over and over. My poor mother, um, <laughs> she said, "You can teach everything, but no violin." <laughs> we, we were in a small town; there weren't any violins, so she was <laughs> <like that. laughs> Yeah, a lot of hearing over and over, and usually waiting for that one mistake to occur each week. <laughs> Do you tend to compose at the piano, Susan? Um, yes, both the acoustic, and then I have a keyboard that is hooked into my computer, and I'm, I compose on Finale. Oh! Which is uh, very high-powered, as you know, <laughs> Alan. Um, I guess that's what they use in the publishing business. Would, um, but would you explain that for everybody so a moment? Okay. I, I just sit down and start playing with notes and things just kind of come. I'm not sure how. And sometimes I'm just scribbling, not, not putting them on a staff, but actually the, the name of, you know, GA, whatever, and up and down the page, and then I go to the computer and then start entering the notes and the, all the you know, dynamics and that kind of thing, but um, I like doing it on the, the acoustic piano, but sometimes I'm at the the keyboard upstairs and it comes there too. Would, would you explain Finale to uh, everybody? Sure, it's a, a software program um, that, golly, you can write scores for orchestras and choirs. They have templates that come up on the screen. Um, that you fill in, but it's, um, it's a lot of ways the graphics program because you're entering notes and the, little, the hairpins and the fortes and you know, you're moving things around and um, it's quite fascinating. Uh, if you're good enough, I think you can actually enter it directly, but the computer is so literal. If you don't enter it, push the note down in the exact amount of time you'll get you know, a 16th note where you want a corporate note, so I just enter it by hand. But um, a lot of um, music teachers at schools use it, um, orchestra leaders I assume do. Um, you can have it play back, you can um, use audio to uh, enhance it. It's got all these different uh, bells and whistles on it, so it's... Uh, you can transpose too, right? Oh, yeah. Once you enter a piece, you can right. transpose a bit. Exactly. It's a touch of a button. Right, and I can send Laura a PDF of it, um, or anybody. So we, call that, so we call that a notation software, right? It's a uh, notation program. Right. Be That's because right. It's it was scores. made for with, with notation. It's also gotten so it can be, re, you know, record things. Um, at first there was Cakewalk, I think, and that was more a recording software, and Finale was a notation. And they've both kind of... Um, added on the opposite one, um, mm, it's kind of urged. But it's, it's a major one for notating and publishing, so we actually can print it out, can print it out on my inkjet printer, and so I can be not only a composer, but a, a publisher. 
And um, and finale is finale an expensive program? Um, if you're a student, it's not so much, but it, it can be. I think it's like four hundred and fifty dollars if you're not, and maybe two hundred and fifty if you're a student. But there's an option on there. Uh, I think it's called songwriter that is a lot less expensive if you don't plan on doing orchestral parts that's what someone told me because it is i think it was even six hundred dollars if you yeah. just the regular version but you can get the watered down version that's still plenty fine for mm -hmm. this kind of work uh for a lot less money so i want to yes there's just a lot of different ones that came up i started even in the 90s with software and there wasn't very much and really nobody to teach me and I was so motivated, I just you know, hunkered down and <laughs> learned it because I really wanted to do this. So Excellent, is excellent. With, um, guitar and drums, does it work with that? Uh, the question over here was, does it work with guitar and drums? Does Finale work with... Uh, well, you can, you can write the score and you can play it back if you've got something to play it back on, or assign. You can assign a guitar to it, but it. Uh, it's a computer you know, program. I haven't so you really can done any recording like with it, on, but I have um, I written. I wrote songs that were were to be recorded, um, or CD, for a children's um, situation. And so I would assign a banjo, I'd assign a trombone to the various parts, and then play it back. And it was a lot cheaper than hiring a trombone player and a banjo player. And we wrote a drum, um, drum line, and um, it, it could play it back, but it's not like recording your own. And I, I, that's my extent of my knowledge at this point. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, before, the, before the next piece, I'm going to go upstairs where my modem is and perhaps turn it more toward where we are and see if we get a better picture. Oh, okay. So, very good. You can talk with Laura for a minute. Okay, very good. <laughs> Susan's written a bunch of new songs that are my favorites, just to let you know. Uh, in oh, case good. you're interested in playing more of her work. Yes, absolutely. Good call. <laughs> so we have one more player. We have one more player doing a, uh, another Susan Smith piece here. This is Tiffany is our next player. Tiffany is most famous for being Bobby's sister. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Bobby's, famous. Bobby's famous for being Tiffany's brother, I should say. And Tiffany's going to play the piece Spanish Reflections. Yeah.
different area. Beautiful. Yes. That's a difficult, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a difficult place of peace. Right? Especially in certain places. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I'll turn over here. Yes, we were talking earlier. See if you're seeing anybody here. Um, oops. Oh, 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 that must have hurt. Don't take her, Alan. Are you guys okay? <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm sorry. Let's see what you're seeing there. There, there you have at least one person that you're seeing. <laughs> there we go. There's, there's those guys. Um, Tiffany, we were speaking about that piece uh, resembling a train ride, and uh, that, or like a roller coaster, uh, and that it takes this emotional roller coaster turn as well. And, and uh, it, um, Tiffany had done a really lovely write up on it. it. You know, we really talked about it quite a lot, and, and uh, she did a lot of great work with it. And really, everyone here did great work with what they were doing. I was really oh, so yes. impressed. Amazing. Amazing. Brilliant writing, too. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you so much, Susan, for this. Yes. <laughs> this is so wonderful to have the electronics to be able to do this. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, uh, would you like to hear another piece or two just for fun? <laughs> would, would, oh, sure. Did, did you play your Chopin? Sure. Oh, we'd love to have Lily play her Chopin. Opus. Opus. It's pos posthumous. This is the posthumous E minor uh, waltz.
<coughs> uh, and um, so it's a competition that's done yearly. It's actually an international competition. Um, so they get, because they get entrants all over from people who want to play at Carnegie Hall. And uh, he runs uh, his, ex he also runs this in Austria, in uh, Vienna, Austria is a big center. Um, and all throughout the U.S., uh, Canada has it. There's a couple countries. I think he's even in Indonesia and some places like that. And Lily's played there before, right? She yeah. She's played there a few times. How many times have you done Golden Key now? Uh, this is my seventh. This will be number wow. seven. Yes. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> and how many times did you hit Carnegie out of that? Four. Four of them hit Carnegie Hall, in fact. Really yes. cool. Yeah. Oh. Um, can, if we can play one more piece, the, the other thing that's about to happen for Golden Key auditions is that Bobby and Tiffany are going to play a duet on a oh, George Gershwin. And we, and we would love if they could, if you'd make them nervous by letting them play their duet, they have another week to their audition. And it better be perfect. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is called Rialto Ripples. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> so we're about to uh, enjoy a little ice cream cake. Oh, and and uh, see, I'm what sorry, I'm having there? trouble aiming the con. So much. This is just, well, this has been a treat for me, certainly. Thank you That's so much. And I, I have a lot of photos uh, to, that I'll give to you. Can you see me there? You can see me now. Yeah. So I just took a lot of pictures that I'll send you as regular uh, JPEGs. Okay, and then thank also, you. Also, there's been the camera rolling, so there'll be a normal looking camera shot of everything as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll send you on some new pieces to learn. All right. Yes, please do. <laughs> Excellent. So, to try out for me. <laughs> so Beautifully. Beautifully done, everyone. We really enjoyed your playing. Yes, for sure. It's fantastic. Beautiful composing. Thank yes. You. What a special, exciting day here. Thank you, God, so much there. The, the one thing I'd like to leave them with for me is that remember that you can compose. No one told me I could. They didn't tell me I couldn't. But I didn't learn that until in my 30s. I played everybody else's piece, but I never thought about uh, composing. Yeah. And I had to get into, I was a medical degree and it was a creativity workshop and they said to create something in your own form. And I thought, my gosh, I've never read and, and I sat down trying to write, and I had to get up and kind of pace for a while, because it was like, am I supposed to be doing this? <laughs> and I got hooked. <laughs> so, here I am. Yeah. yeah, clearly you were meant to be doing this, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, little did I know. Uh, thank you, and thanks everyone for putting up for the, the little glitches that go on, but we'll get this better and better as we do more of them, so I'll look forward to our next adventure. Well, thank you, and eat a bite of cake for us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Think of all those calories you're saving. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>